Hey guys, Dowart here. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to set up a free NAS system and further to take that free NAS system and set it up as a network attached time machine. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is download free NAS from freenas.org. We're just going to use the standard release 64 bit. I'm going to go ahead and download the CD installer. I'm going to intend to use this in a um, virtual box just to show you guys how this works. So we'll let this download. All right, now that we've got this downloaded, I'm going to open a virtual box, create a new virtual box. Gonna name it free NAS. Free NAS is BSD. And continue. And I'll give it two gigs of RAM. Continue. I'm gonna create a virtual hard drive. Just a VDI. Dynamically allocated. Now free NAS works kind of interestingly. Um, the main drive that you install it on, be it USB, C ROM, whatever, is not really you know designed to it, it, you don't store any storage on it. You'll see what I mean in a few. So I'm just gonna give it like eight gigs for now. It's more than enough. Great, we'll hit start. It's gonna ask, you know, what do I wanna use uh, from my desktop? Where I download free NAS. Open. Start. And boot free NAS. Oop, fatal trap. Oh, APIC error. Okay. Power off the machine. Probably should have went into our settings anyway. Storage. This is a matter of fact, I need to go ahead and add a secondary hard drive. The secondary hard drive is going to be where the uh, data is actually stored on here in the virtual. In a virtual box. So, NAS storage. That one I want it to be fairly large. I'll make it 250 gig. Create my network. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a bridged adapter. And then our system, I want to enable IO APIC. Now let's start it. Boot free NAS. And there we go. ACPI hosts come up. I am running Mac OS 10.8.4 here. I'll install upgrade. I'll install it on the 8 gig. And there goes our installation. All right, now we're gonna reboot the system. Reset host. Now we're booting off the hard drive. All right, you can see here. I'm gonna try the following URL to access the web user interface. So. 192.168.33. All right, so first thing we gotta do is go to our storage, create our volume. So we'll go to volume manager, we'll make a new volume. I'm just gonna call this. Make it a ZFS. Add volume. Now I need to add a user. And I'm gonna 
I'll set the home directory of the user to that time machine volume. So password and then name. Once you've done that, you go down to sharing, Apple AFP shares, add an AFP share. And you know this is just gonna be time machine, time machine mass. I'm gonna set that to the same directory, time machine. No password. Let me worry about any of that. Let's see. I'm gonna allow my user. Rewrite access to my user. I want to turn this discovery on. Time machine. Hit OK. I'm gonna enable the service. On. Settings are all set up. Server name is going to be free NAS. So now what we'll do is get this out the way. Go. Connect the server. Free NAS. Connect. Punch in my user. And password I set up. Connect. Then we will go to system preferences. Time machine. Available disk. Use this disk. Use them both. Asking for my login information. Connect. Waiting the backup. looking for the backup disk. Preparing backup. Now obviously I have all this running in a virtual machine right now. It's all sitting on the computer so I'm literally backing up to my own computer. Let's see Time Machine Backups was created. Now FreeNAS does not run as fast as full-blown MetaTalk on uh, Linux. So if you, if for some reason, you know, absolute performance is critical for you, and there we go, starts backing up. I'm not gonna bother letting it run. Just stop that backup. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that disk. Just stop using it. And yeah, that's all there is to it. You can run FreeNAS on pretty much any kind of hardware you want. Um, FreeNAS is a little interesting in the way it boots up. What you want to do is actually set it so that you have a, you can install it to a USB drive or something where you just boot off that and set your actual storage array inside. You can set up RAID Z, um, you know, any kind of uh, RAID Z2, you can do all kinds of different RAID modes on it. You can just do UFS where it's just a bunch of disks, I mean, you know, JBOD. You can do pretty much whatever you want. FreeNAS is very, very simple to use, very powerful to use. Um, but like I said, it's not quite as fast, especially on writes. Um, for me, as a backup device, that's not an issue at all. So, yeah, there you go.